Oh yeah, elites, that's right, it's me, your boy, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number 24. I've done some work, some movement off camera, so check this out. This is the area now, and this is the house now. I've added a little bit more. I brought our Wither Skull over from the other base, and then a little bit of armor. You know, just to spice the armor stand up. Nobody likes an empty armor stand. Over here, we've got a brewing stand right there. And then I moved a lot of things over to this base for today's episode. But also, I figured it was pretty much time to start moving things over. Now, I didn't move everything. I moved basically everything that I think I could probably get some use out of especially today so we'll have to go back eventually but yeah this is what the room is looking like now i also added some item frames up here i think this looks really good but definitely going to need to expand very soon we need a storage room definitely 100 this wasn't ever meant to be a permanent storage room anyways thank you for the continued love on the series including on this episode with the like button thank you i appreciate it big time so today's episode is going to be all about the basics of redstone we're talking the very very basics hopefully after this episode you'll understand redstone a little bit better this is a lead-in for the project in the next episode we'll talk more about that oh wait for it uh, next episode today we've got to break down redstone i have to lead this off with uh this statement redstone on java edition and bedrock edition is different some of the stuff is the same but some of the stuff is different today i'll be going over java edition redstone mechanics as of minecraft 1.16.3 but uh, 1.16.4 is on the way soon, and honestly, for the most part, the Minecraft updates don't really change too much about redstone. But this place, definitely not good for showing off redstone. Not the vibe at all. Let's go somewhere better. Much better. This is definitely the vibe for a redstone breakdown. So, redstone is a really, really interesting part of Minecraft. It's also crazy complex. Today, this is where we'll start. These are what I would consider most of the basic redstone things. Then, later on in the video, we'll talk about some more complex ones, but this is our starting point. Let's go ahead and start with the absolute basics, though. Redstone ore. This is the source of redstone dust. If you're going to want to do any redstone in your world, you're going to need to find this stuff right here. If you're looking for it, go down deep in your world. Like, we're talking, like, diamond level. Y0 to Y50 is where you'll find redstone ore generating in your world now if you mine this stuff with a normal pickaxe you'll get somewhere in between one to four redstone dust but with fortune three you can actually receive up to i believe 32 redstone from a single ore with fortune three yeah that's crazy fortune 100 the way to go if you still touch this block you will actually get the redstone ore block redstone ore is actually the only ore that you can interact like this with if you interact with the block the block will actually light up and emit a light level of nine Kind of cool. Eventually, the block will go out, though. All right, so you've mined your redstone ore. Now it's time to talk about redstone dust. This stuff right here. As of Minecraft 1.16, this is what the stuff looks like when you place it down. That's a cross, actually. Now, you can interact with this and turn it into a dot if you'd like. Uh, we'll talk about what that does in a second. Redstone dust makes up the absolute basics of redstone. If you're going to do anything with this stuff, you will need redstone dust. Now, currently, this is a redstone dust. If we place a couple more pieces of redstone down next to it, it'll actually connect. This is what we call a redstone wire. Now, redstone has 16 different power states, 0 through 15. We'll talk about those power states in just a second. Redstone torch. This boy right here, that's a redstone torch. A redstone torch is a power source. Redstone torches are crazy, crazy useful with redstone builds. Now, check this out. Right here, we have a redstone dust. If I go ahead and put a redstone dust right here, though, boom, we have a tiny redstone wire, and it's actually powered, like it's lit up. Also, if you power a redstone torch, like with a lever, you can actually turn it off. So check this out. Right here in my hand, I have a redstone torch. Once I place this down, this line is going to change. Check this out. Boom. The line lights up other than that final dust piece right there. The end of the wire is not on. Why is that? Well, uh, because this redstone torch is a power source, and this power source is powering this redstone line. Now, remember that bit about the redstone dust having 16 different power levels? Uh, yeah, of course you do. Well, here's how it works. We have a power source right here. Then we have a redstone level of 15. Then 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. This redstone dust is not powered right now. 
Now, aside from the color of the line, there is another way that you could tell if you have power or not. That way uses the redstone lamp. So check this out. If I pulled a redstone lamp right there, it's on. If I put one right here though, it's not on. And that's because this redstone dust isn't on. But uh, this line doesn't look like it's going to this block. How is that working? Redstone power. It's definitely something that can get a little bit confusing until you really, really get it down. So uh, right here, we have a piece of redstone on a block. If we go ahead and put some redstone lanterns around it, we can check if this thing is powered or not. By the way, the redstone lantern, that's this thing right here. You can use a redstone signal to turn this thing on and off. Controllable lighting. So check this out. Right now, we have no power. If we go down below this block and place a torch, all of a sudden, everything is going to turn on. This redstone line is powered by the torch that's placed right down below it and all the the lamps are on if we toggle this though turn it into a single piece of dust check this boom everything turns off now why is that well as of minecraft 1.16 if it looks like redstone is going to something then it's going to power that thing so right here it looks like redstone is going to all of these lanterns so basically it's powering all of these lanterns or in other words all of these blocks around it now if i were to place a redstone dust on top of this watch this the line is actually going to connect and these ones are going to be cut off why is that well uh simple uh, it doesn't look like the redstone is going to this lamp so it's not going to this lamp now uh, let's just go ahead and remove this for now we're done with that so this torch check this out this torch is powering this block this block this block this block and this block right above it the torch is not powering the block that it's sitting on so if i put the torch right on top of the lantern that lantern is off Here's another way to look at it. Place this block down, put a redstone torch on it. It's not powering that block right there, but it is powering this block, this block, this block, and this block. It is also powering that block down below it. Redstone torches will never power the block that they are placed on. So if you place it on the ground, it's not going to power the ground block. If you place it up there on the side of a block, it's not going to power that side. Back to the redstone squiggle. This redstone squiggle is laying on the ground, right? Uh, yeah, right, obviously. When you lay a redstone line on top of a block, it actually powers the block that it is on top of. So in other words, this piece of powered redstone right here is actually powering the block that is right below it. That's how this lamp right here is being powered. The block right here is powered, and so that lamp is turned on. This block right here isn't powered though because the redstone isn't on, so the lamp isn't powered. Basically, this block is sending the signal into the redstone lamp. A little confusing, but basically, that's how it works. Now, a uh, torch isn't the only option for a power source in Minecraft. Check this out. Here we have a lever. A lever is basically a switch. Off on there we go same amount of power coming from this thing the lever will stay in whatever position it's in until it's changed by a player so back to off there we go and we can just go ahead and remove that next up we have the button check this out if i press the button everything is powered but only while the button is pushed down the button will eventually pop back out if you have a wooden button you can actually shoot an arrow into the wooden button and activate things if you have a stone button then that's not going to work now, speaking of stone and wood, check this out. Here we have a pressure plate. If we walk on this pressure plate, everything is going to turn on. But as soon as the pressure plate pops back up, it's going to turn off again. Just like the button, but this time a floor switch. And same thing goes for the wooden pressure plate. Check this out. Walk on it. Mm -hmm. Turns off. Mm -hmm. Yep, amazing. Beautiful. Now, uh, watch this. If I drop an item on this, everything is actually powered. Meanwhile, if I drop an item on the stone one, nothing is powered at all so there's the difference between wood and stone pressure plates all wooden pressure plates are exactly the same so we're talking jungle acacia birch you know all of the wooden pressure plates a black stone pressure plate behaves exactly the same as a stone pressure plate okay so back to the lever for a second let's go ahead and power this line now let's say i wanted to power this lamp right here well i can't just run redstone over there because the signal doesn't reach that long we're going to need to extend our signal somehow how do we do that well uh check this out right here we have a repeater a repeater basically extends or repeats the signal so repeater place right there redstone power 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 this lamp down here down powered this lamp is though repeaters are honestly crazy crazy useful if you have a redstone line that's going to end up being at least a little long then a repeater is definitely 100 percent the way to go now you can place this repeater anywhere it doesn't have to be at the end of the line if i put the repeater right here then this is going to be 15 
and then 14 13 and so on you know all the way down you can put more than one repeater right next to each other if you wanted to if you needed to for whatever reason now check this out if we power this line right here we of course have a repeater that's powering this redstone dust into the lamp so that's pretty simple now uh over here if i put another repeater and then maybe i don't know we have like another redstone line right there and we power this one watch this that repeater is actually locked so I remove this and the repeater is still holding this signal the lamp is still on watch this though as soon as i remove this unlocked and the power is gone the first repeater was unlocked and the power was lost if we put this repeater back nothing's gonna happen this repeater is locked in the off position so if i power this right here does not matter that's a locked repeater and then unlock it and boom there we go it turns back on now the repeater has another functionality it's called tick delay right here we have a one tick delay repeater so basically the repeater actually kind of delays the signal it's gonna be hard to catch but watch this i hit the lever the lamp turns on right okay now if we add a little bit of delay let's say four tick delay right there boom you see that you see that stall it's actually pretty obvious mm-hmm that's the delay functionality right there. Repeater delay is very, very useful for timed machines. Maybe you have a spiral door and certain parts should open after the other. Well, that's probably going to be accomplished with repeater delay. Now, redstone signals can get a little bit confusing. So uh, check this out. We're gonna go ahead and actually run a line into this block right here. If we power that, the block should be powered, right? Because the redstone is going into that block. We can check it like this, boom. Okay, so that block has power. But uh, if we put a redstone dust right here, there is no power coming from that. How do we get a power out of this block? Well, uh, actually pretty simple, repeater. Basically, this repeater is detecting the weak signal that's inside of this block. On the other hand, a redstone wire cannot. Basically, you can think of the signal on this block or now the lamp as too weak for the wire to actually detect. But the repeater, it's a big brain, big detection. So those are some of the basics of redstone. There's seriously a lot to redstone, but uh, let's move on. And now let's talk about redstone components. So wait, we've already talked about some. A redstone component is something that works with redstone. So a repeater, redstone component, redstone lamp, redstone component let's talk about this component right here the piston this thing is sweet if we power this thing it's going to push out if we unpower it it will uh, retract back in now let's talk about the sticky piston the sticky piston is a little bit different but it's very very similar if we power the sticky piston it will push out if we unpower it it'll pull back now uh check this out let's put a sticky piston right here and then power both of these pistons with a redstone line so a repeater or a repeater we can't do redstone dust because they don't touch the pistons so they're not powered so piston sticky piston let's power them boom they both push out let's uh unpower them boom they both go back in identical so far now let's put a block here and a block here they're both going to push the block but the sticky piston will actually pull the block as well check that out that's because the slime on there it's sticky so it's actually able to basically act like glue for one block and one block only so if we do this uh, it's only gonna pull this block right there finally last but not least the observer check out this unimpressed boy right here that's an observer an observer is a block update detector what's a block update well a block update is a change in a block so this block right here uh, in front of the observer it's basically air right now the observer is detecting this block and this block only if we were to place something right here the observer would detect it now how do we know that it detected it well check this so we put some redstone back here in a lamp and then we update this the observer emits a one tick redstone pulse when an update is detected so if i keep updating this right here it's going to detect it now an update doesn't actually have to be a block place you can actually just change something on the block so right here i'm updating the redstone dust and the observer gets it it just knows so the observer basically a miniature block update detector again the block that it's observing is only the block directly in front of it right in front of the face we're talking the observer is amazingly essential and it's very important for automatic farms so i would consider these things right here the things that we've just talked about the most basic of redstone components but of course there are more a lot more so next up let's talk about these things real quick here some of these things are still pretty basic other things get a little bit more complex we're gonna keep it pretty simple today let's go ahead and actually start with doors this right here is a door you've definitely seen it before we can actually use redstone to power the door with redstone power we can open and close doors now iron doors will not let zombies through they can't break down these doors but uh normal doors definitely uh 100 zombies could break down this door depending on your game's difficulty setting 
both doors pretty much behave identically with redstone power. Now check this out, if we put a button right here, this is crazy. Yep, the door is open. Uh-huh, you use redstone power to open doors, pretty basic. You can also use redstone power to open fence gates, uh, pretty much the same as a door. Also, I should say that villagers and piglins can actually open up normal doors, not iron doors though, because these can't be opened up without power. You need power to open these things up. Fence gates cannot be opened by anything other than the player. Now, finally, trap door. Trap door, miniature door. Basically the same exact thing. Power will open and close the trap door. An iron trap door, just like with an iron door, will need power to be opened and closed. I'm trying to open it and I'm just placing more trap doors. Doesn't work like that. But power, boom. Nice and easy. TNT, oh sweet TNT, everybody loves TNT. You already know what this does. So we have a piece of TNT placed right there. We run a redstone line over to it and then we power the line and the TNT is ignited. That TNT will then explode. Now, uh, as of Minecraft 1.15, when TNT explodes, it drops everything. So, you don't actually lose any blocks. I could go ahead and place all of these blocks right back in here, rebuild the wall exactly how it was, however it was, and I would have all of the blocks that I would need to do that. If you have something like a bookshelf that is blown up, it'll basically be like a player mined that bookshelf. So, uh, I don't know how this wall went, but trust me, there's enough, there's enough blocks here to finish everything, fix it, put it right back to normal. Kind of cool. Crazy useful for automatic harvesting machines. The target block, oh, the target block. This is a really cool block. The target block emits a redstone signal dependent upon where it is hit. So let's actually try and be really bad at this. Let's try and hit it right on the edge there. Uh, okay, not quite, but three lamps, right? Now, if I hit it dead center, boom, five lamps. So this block is activated by projectiles. It doesn't only mean arrows. You could throw a trident at this block and have it work still. It's pretty cool. Ah, the lectern, a Minecraft 1.14 block. This block looks amazing, but it also has some interesting redstone functionality. So, if we go ahead and put a piece of redstone dust right there, and then the lamp right there, and then I actually use the lectern and turn the page, watch the lamp in the background. It actually updates. Every time I turn the page, a one tick signal is sent out. Which is cool and all, but that's not all that it can do. If we grab a comparator, something that we'll talk about in a minute, and then we run a line uh, coming off of that comparator next to all of these lamps, something interesting will happen. So, uh, check this out. All of these lamps are powered right now, except the last one. That's lamp number 16. If we go back over to this book and go back one page, most of those lamps are actually going to turn off. Comparators can pull a redstone signal out of a lectern that strength is dependent upon the page number of the book on the lectern. So page one, page two. Very, very strong signal. Very, very weak signal. Now check this out. This book is a lot longer. Here I have a book that's 15 pages long. If I go ahead and go over here, watch the lamps. As I turn the page, uh, lamps are going to turn on all the way up to uh, 15. Once I get to 15, all of them are going to be on other than that final one right there. The whole power level thing still definitely does apply. If I were to put a book in here with 20 pages, uh, well, then depending on what page I'm on, normally the first 15 lamps would be powered. What I'm saying here is that this isn't a workaround to that whole power level 15 thing. You can't make a long book and have a crazy long signal. Sorry. Surprised we haven't caught this one quite yet. Check out this red red block. This block right here is a block of redstone. It is made up of nine redstone dust. The block of redstone can be a power source. Ah, next up, the hopper. The hopper is amazing. This thing is a game changer. Now, you've actually seen a little bit of the hopper in this series so far. I used a hopper in the cow crusher farm, both of them. If I didn't say yet, hoppers are really, really interesting. So check this out. We can interact with the hopper. It's almost like a chest. We can put items inside of it. Now, what happens to the hopper is basically dependent upon two things. Uh, if the hopper is powered or not, and where the hopper is facing. So here we have a hopper going into the ground. Let's say over here we had another hopper going into a chest. If I throw another red ingot into this hopper, and then throw one into this hopper, uh, things are going to happen differently. In here, we have another right ingot. In here, we have nothing. Why is that? Well, simple. Uh, this hopper is going into the chest, so inside of the chest, we have our nether right ingot. If you want to place a hopper going a certain direction, crouch place it while looking at whatever you're trying to place it on. So right here, if I put a line of hoppers right there, we're actually going to have nothing in all of these hoppers right now, but then as soon as I throw something in it, uh, then watch what happens. Nether right ingot goes in that one, but it's not in any of these, and that's because the hoppers have moved it right over to this spot right here. But let's say if we powered maybe that hopper right there, we put a redstone block right there, this is power. Let's throw an ingot in here and then see what happens. If we check this, nothing, nothing, 
Oh, something. If a hopper is powered, then it is locked, which means the item cannot pass through it. So if we check over here, nothing. Unpower this hopper, and the nether writing it can move again. Take a look at these two chests. Identical, right? Uh, wrong. The chest on the left is a normal chest. The chest on the right is a trapped chest. Now, what's the difference? Well, a trap chest, when opened, emits a redstone signal. So, uh, check this out. If I were to put a normal chest right here, and then put a block of netherite in here, it goes away, right away, and it ends up in this chest over here because of these hoppers that I've set up. Now, let's go ahead and put a trap chest right here, open it up, and put something in it. Nothing. Why? Well, the trap chest is emitting a redstone signal, so the hopper below it is actually locked right now. As soon as we close it, though, the chest is actually going to empty out and the item will be moved right over here. Trap chests can be used for, wait for it, traps. Maybe you're trying to set up some sort of TNT trap. Trap chests run a redstone wire over to some TNT and then boom, after someone opens it. You can make a double chest out of a trap chest as well. Comparators are crazy, crazy advanced. Like, honestly, we're not going to get into all of the comparator stuff today, but check this out. If I power this right here, this comparator is powered. The comparator compares redstone signals. So, we have a 15 and then a 14. Right here is actually going to be a 14, 13, uh, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now, uh, the comparator also takes signals in from the side as well, and will compare those signals. Um, yeah, it, it gets really advanced. And then watch this, there's a subtract mode as well, right here, signal of three, signal of two, uh, signal of one right there. Yeah, comparators are really advanced, but, uh, comparators can also be used to get rid of scammers, uh, yep, yeah, just get rid okay. Aha, sorry about that small slip-up. Uh, comparators can be used to detect if an item is inside of a hopper or not. So, right now, the comparator is not on. If we go ahead and lock this hopper, which, by the way, if a hopper is locked, it can't pick up items from the top either. But if we lock the hopper and then throw another right ingot in that one, it's going to move over to here, and this comparator will actually be on. Check this. A weak signal right here. It's actually powered. You can see the particle effects. This is amazing for item sorters, but we'll talk more about those when we actually build one in our world. Ah, uh, dispenser uh, dropper. Two blocks that look very, very similar and have a similar name, but do very, very different things. So, check this out. Right here is a dispenser. Inside of the dispenser, we have nine item slots. We'll put a water bucket. Over here is a dropper. Same thing. Nine item slots. We'll uh, put a water bucket again. Now, if we go ahead and power these two things, different things will happen. Watch this. The dispenser actually dispenses the water. The dropper dropped the water bucket and gave it back to me. Now, let's go ahead and unpower these. I want that water to go away, though, so we're going to have to power that one again. There we go. The water is picked up. This one had nothing inside of it, so nothing happened. Droppers drop things. Dispensers dispense things. The dispensing mechanism is actually really, really interesting. It's crazy advanced. For example, if you have a sheep in front of the dispenser and then you put a pair of shears in here, the dispenser can shear the sheep. If, again, you put a pair of shears inside of the dispenser and it's facing a full beehive or bee nest, it can actually harvest that beehive or bee nest. Dispensers, very, very useful for automatic farms. We will be seeing a lot of the dispenser. Droppers, uh, they're not as useful, but they are useful for some things. Check this one out. We can actually use droppers to move items into other droppers. Right here, a water bucket. We power it. Now we have no water bucket in there, but a water bucket in here. Same thing, power it. It's going to move forward. It's going to keep moving forward all the way until I get to that front one, and then it's going to be spit out. So droppers, uh, kind of like a low-tech hopper, or at least a low-tech hopper that looks really, really happy and can drop things. Last but not least, for our redstone talk today, here we have the daylight detector. The daylight detector is another thing that's kind of advanced, honestly. The daylight detector can detect the time of day, or if you want to set it to night mode, the time of night. The signal emitted from this thing will be dependent upon where the sun or the moon is at so right here we have the sun right there let's go ahead and make this line like way way longer and then let's actually change the time so maybe maybe we do like time set noon that's definitely different than now watch this the signal got a whole lot stronger it actually goes all the way out there now now let's go ahead and say maybe time set midnight and watch this boom and no signal at all because there is no sun but if we switch this to night mode there we go we have a pretty strong signal now, if we go ahead and just say maybe time set night, like the beginning of night, the signal got weaker. If we go ahead and say time set day, because it's in night mode, no signal. Put it back to day mode, we have a signal. Yeah, uh, they're kind of advanced, but they are really, really cool. You could use these to maybe like play a song in the morning, ring a bell in the morning, ring a bell at nighttime. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 
All right, so for redstone and its components, that actually basically does it today. But there's one more thing that I'd like to briefly talk about. Those things are rails. So here we have a minecart with a hopper in it, then we have a rail, and then we have a powered rail. We're just going to talk about the very basics for these things because we will be using them in our auto farm that we're going to build in the next episode. So a rail right here, that's just a rail. We can put a minecart or any kind of minecart variant on the rail. Then we can walk up to that minecart, in this case the minecart with the hopper in it, and push it. It moves on the rail. Very cool. But uh, eventually that minecart would stop moving. What if we put a powered rail here though? So right now actually, um, ironically, this is not powered. We have to power it. There we go. We power it. We put a minecart here. It's going to move. Boom. You see that? That's pretty cool. Now we can actually make a continuous loop here. If we go ahead and give this cart some space, put two powered rails at the end, solid blocks right there. Then we drop that down. How mesmerizing. That is amazing. Very cool. So little thing about hoppers. Uh, check this. Solid block right here. If I drop the torch, it's just going to sit there. The hopper can't pick it up. For a hopper to pick an item up, it needs to be basically right on top of the hopper. But a hopper minecart, that is definitely not the case here. Let's go ahead and put a block up here, and then we'll drop the redstone torch on it. The hopper minecart can actually pick items up through blocks. Very, very useful for automatic collection systems. There are a couple more types of rails, and there's a whole lot more to redstone. But for today, those are basically the basics. Hopefully, you understand redstone a little bit more. All right, so with the foundations of redstone laid down nice and clearly, that sets us up for the next big farm. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal the farm in this episode, and then we'll work on it next time. What farm is the first auto farm? Well, for me, that's a pretty simple uh, question, easy answer. Right here, we have an empty space that's sad, it's lonely, it's bad. Uh, we need an enchanting setup, which means we need about twice as much paper as what we have currently, or what we would be able to make currently. So, the first farm in this world is going to be an automatic sugarcane farm, or at least the first automatic farm. No clue where I'm gonna put it, gonna try and decide on that one in between episodes. I really, really genuinely don't know, but uh, I'll come back next time and hopefully have an idea as to where I want to put the farm, and I might even this time actually clear out a little bit of land so we can just get right into the build. But it is now time for the best time of the day, the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is from Epic Gamer. Uh, the comment reads, I'm actually super excited for the ward and it's terrifying and i love it the reason i wanted the ice soldier me too was because i wanted a new mob to fight and now we've got one and it's incredibly dangerous to take head on yes I wanted to talk about the warden because I gotta be honest, elites, I think I'm obsessed with the warden. I'm really excited for it. I love how the warden kind of creates that shadow effect when it's near you. That is so scary. I cannot wait for the warden. The warden is hands down going to be the coolest thing. And you know, I was thinking, this isn't confirmed, but imagine if the warden is sort of the first boss that you actually have to take on. Maybe, and big maybe here, just kind of thought it would be cool. The warden is kind of guarding the stronghold. So you have to find the stronghold and then you have to take out the Warden before you can actually go to the Ender Dragon and take that thing out. I mean, I feel like that would mean we would need an Ender Dragon fight in the future because uh, it's the second boss. And honestly, if you can take out a Warden, you can probably take out the Dragon. But still, how cool would that be? Like the Warden guarding the Stronghold? I don't know. I really like that. But anyways, that's going to do it for the Redstone Basics episode. If you have any Redstone questions, go ahead and throw them down below. And if you have any big Redstone big brain moves, throw them down in the comments as well. That's going to cut it for me, though. If you liked today's video, smash that like button, subscribe. Hope you still liked it, even if you're a Redstone pro. And uh, today, I have some big thank yous. A big thank you to Mr. PD Wash, Malin312, and Respect the Kitty. Thank you all so much for the support. Until next time, stay Redstone. Goodbye, everyone.